Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, a breaking story today that a blockchain bandit is guessing private keys and has made off with millions of dollars of ETH. So how can this happen? I'm going to break it down into easy to understand terms for you. In theory, this vulnerability actually applies to a number of cryptocurrencies because of the way that private keys are generated. And hopefully by now you're familiar with the private key. If you've got a hardware wallet, it's the thing that lives on your device. If you've generated a wallet in another way, you may have seen it on screen, you may be storing it as a paper wallet or whatnot. But the private key is the thing that you have to keep safe because if someone else gets their hands on that, they can access all your funds. Now, with this vulnerability, if someone guesses your private key, it doesn't matter if it's on a hardware device because they have still guessed it. So this applies um, to that in theory, but I'm going to talk about whether or not you are affected and how this all works. So don't panic just yet. If we have a look at this story, we had a group of researchers that wanted to explore the security vulnerabilities with how all these um, complex moving parts work, particularly with Ethereum. The first thing to note is that guessing a private key is astronomically hard. Ethereum uses 256-bit encryption, which means the number of possibilities is 2 to the power of 256. Now, to put that in real-world terms for you, the chances of guessing the same private key is like me saying to you, I want you to guess what grain of sand I just touched and I put you in outer space and you don't know what galaxy I was in, let alone what planet I was on, let alone what beach I was on. So crazy high numbers, even with super powerful computers, um, spitting out combinations, this is still take years to do and I don't want to talk about quantum computers just yet. I've done videos on them in the past. So this process is known <coughs> as ether combing and they're looking at Ethereum addresses to see when and, um, Ethereum or tokens go in them that are associated with um, private keys and it's the weak private keys that are of particular interest. As I just spoke about, Ethereum private keys are very hard to crack and guess but if someone generates their own private keys using really basic measures, this is where that human um, element comes into it and we may be the weakness or the vulnerability but the researchers don't know exactly how this is coming about. So let's have a look at the story. As I said, in theory, this can apply to any cryptocurrency that uses public-private key pairs. And if you can generate a private key, this is possible. Ethereum's got 300 million transactions, 50 million key pairs. So the chances of guessing it um, you know, are crazy, crazy low, as I just said. But the researchers found 700 private keys that corresponded to these um, addresses that have 50,000 transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. So they've identified 13,000 ETH that was transferred um, to the hacker's wallet. And what they've now found is that there's a number of hackers out there that have worked out how to do this, and they're sitting there monitoring all those addresses because they know the weak basic private keys. And as soon as Ethereum goes in there, they're withdrawing it and they're stealing these funds. So crazy, crazy numbers. I can't believe how often this is happening. Let's dive in and have a look at this a little bit more. So for the team, the researchers to cover just 1% of the key space um, and using their computer resources, generating 100 trillion private keys a second, it would still take them years to do. So instead of trying to brute force it, they actually found a way to break down the private key from 256 bits to 32 bits at a time, which makes it orders of magnitude um, easier for the computer to scan all these addresses and look for these weak private keys. So let's go back over how private key works. We have that randomly generated with the good wallet software and that private key generates a public key. Now that public key you don't always see. If you're a beginner, you might not have seen this public key before, but you will have seen your address which comes from the public key. Now, good wallets will generate a new address every time and you can still reuse old addresses if you want to, but a good wallet will regenerate from this public key, from the private key, a new Ethereum address each time. If you lose your wallet or whatnot, if you've got your private key backed up or you've got those 12 or 24 word backup phrase, that uses separate software to regenerate your private key, which will then regenerate your public key, regenerate all your addresses, and you can get your funds back if you are to lose your wallet. So hopefully that's a good little intro again, um, and you've seen these long string of numbers and letters, which are these 256-bit private keys. However, 
as always, if humans come into it, we can see that a really basic private key might be a long string of zeros, beginning with 0x as Ethereum private keys and addresses do, and then ending in a one. Now, if we head over to my Ether wallet, we click on access my wallet. We want to do that with software. We want to do that with our private key. As they say here, this is not the recommended way of accessing your wallet. Let's plug this in. And this is one of the basic private keys, the most basic private key that the research has found. So if we have a look in transaction history here, we can see that this has had 700 transactions, this private key that's just a one. So recently, as recently as last week, there's people mucking around with this. It's probably just the researchers or the people that have read this story. But this is just one example of how easy it is once you know someone's basic private key. So you might say, how does this possibly work? And we have a number of wallets out there that let someone generate their own passphrase or generate their own private key. Now, if we type the number one, for example, um, and we can have a look at this number here, the address, the key, public key. If we, someone else comes along a week later and just types one, you're gonna see it generates the same values. Now, if we type hello, we can see there, 2CF. Someone comes along a week later, uses the same basic passcode, 2CF. So it's regenerating, we're getting collisions and that shouldn't be possible if we use random numbers because of the number of possible combinations that we spoke about at the start of this video. So this is one of the possible explanations um, that explains how this is happening, but the researchers aren't exactly sure if some wallets and websites are having errors occurred or compression, um, not using that 256-bit two, value in creating really basic private keys. So if we head back over to the study, they broke that 256-bit key down to eight chunks and said if people are going to use a, a, a basic private key or if there's an error going to occur, it's going to be in that first little chunk or that last little chunk where people are going to enter those values or computer software will enter those values. Sure enough, what they found was in the first little chunk, there was 464 basic private keys they were able to find. Not a lot in the middle there. Um, and then at the end we've got another 264 private keys. So it's pretty scary stuff. Um, 732 private keys that they were able to find compromised associated with 50,000 transactions. So this is happening out there all around us, um, as I said, and in conclusion, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the researchers deposited a dollar of Ethereum in there and they watched the hackers fight over this. So there was two transactions trying to withdraw it. We know that the double spend rule will only let one of those transactions uh, be included in the blockchain by miners. But there's a number of people out there that are monitoring all the Ethereum addresses that they know are associated with the compromise, the really basic private keys. So guys, if you feel that you may have used a service like this to generate a really basic private key, um, I'd probably suggest that you up your security practices. Um, if you're using a ledger or a Trezor and you've allowed that software to generate the private key for you, then you're, you're safe, okay? It's only people that have used a fringe wallet or a random website, and it is crazy how often people tell me that I've used some website I've never even heard of. So if you think you may have done something wrong, I'd encourage you to boot up a new wallet, check that your funds are there, send it. Um, I can't recommend hardware wallets enough. We've got the links in the description below. But hopefully that's an interesting video for you. Explains a little bit about public private key cryptography, how this um, research was done and how the blockchain bandit is guessing people's private keys. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around and thanks for tuning in guys. Cheers.